I feel that 2023 has really reached a tipping point between artists and producers. Um, and you're going to see as I break down this video. There's a looming war going on between the two because mainly they don't know how to handle business. Neither one, especially you new artists and new pr producers, haven't been in the game long enough to understand how you get paid and what you get paid on. And you really don't understand your rights. Now, because of this, this is causing this frustration. And on top of that, there's some videos circulating the Internet that have caused a reverberation throughout the Internet and the producer and artist community that has made it a bit confusing, to say the least, when it comes to trying to figure out how producers should get paid. Because of that, in the beat leasing community, many artists feel that they shouldn't pay producers certain things and many producers don't know what to ask for. And because there's all this confusion and not enough OGs in the game or people from higher up coming down to say, hey, y'all got to squash all this stuff. There is this particular boiling point that's happening right now. And I'm going to jump into it right here on today's episode of the Music Money Makeover Show. Hey everybody, welcome back to the show. My name is Casey Graham. Let's let's hit this real quick and we're going to hop into the slides. Quite frankly, I'm tired of seeing this argument. I know it stems from a lack of knowledge of contracts, producer agreements mainly. I know new producers, you don't understand. You've been in the beat star space and it has confused you. I hate those stupid beat stars lease agreements. I matter of fact, I it's not like I really hate beat leasing. It's just it's just for the, it's the fact that you don't learn the game on that side more so than when you're making a true sale. OK, and in order to step up to that level, you're going to have to understand that side of the game. So now let's dig in and let's really see where this war is coming from, because, man, y'all killing me with these phone calls when y'all call me. And it's like, yo, I don't you know, and I've been getting these phone calls for months. So especially since this video came out. So anyway, let's go. Let's let's hop into it. All right, now the reason why I've been getting these phone calls for months is really stemming from this one video that this artist Futuristic put out. Matter of fact, I just got a phone call yesterday and I had to go back and edit this video. So I'm reshooting it now so you all can have it. And I had to put this in because I know that this is one of the culprits to my issue that I'm having when I do consultations with you all. Futuristic says that producers, there's no way I'm giving you 50% of my record. Okay. All of this was blown out of context, but because many new producers and artists don't really understand how a sale happens on a beat and how a record label acquires the master rights to the track or to the beat that the producer made, this got blown out of proportion. And now people are really confused in the producer and new artist space. All right. Because of that, we're, and we're going to jump through those questions. I want you to look at this, this statement again. And we got to go back to some of my old videos. Producer, there's no way I'm giving you 50% of my record. The key word here is record. Now, he knows what he was saying, but you all don't know what he was saying. I understood it as I'm not giving you 50% of my master. That's what record means. He didn't say I'm not giving you 50% of the publishing. He said I'm not giving you 50% of the record. And because new producers and new artists don't know the difference between a record and, and a composition, we got to dig into that. Okay? So... Let me go back to my old school for those of my loyal followers who've been following me for a minute. You remember this screen when I used to do it on every single video. Two rights of copy. The music industry operates and revolves around two copyrights. That's masters and publishing. Now, what he was referring to was the master side right over here. Sound recordings, as in records, masters, phonogram, that P in the circle that you see right there, or the audio recording file, i.e. the wave MP3 AIFF of the composition, and or song me personally being a record label i'm not giving you 50 percent of the math why, why, why would a record label give a producer 50 percent of the master and even even he said oops i'm in the middle even he said that at the time when he was giving away 50 percent, it didn't make any sense he cleared this up on an interview with uh ko so now let's move back here um so imagine this you're sony records sony Records says yeah man yeah you know you produced the record i'm gonna give you 50 percent of the rec of, the, of the entire album why on earth would a record company do that the artist is the record company you got to tell me that producers so this is what he meant when he was talking about giving you 50 percent. he didn't say nothing about publishing all this stuff over here okay just this 
it doesn't make any sense to do that and we're going to dig into that all right and just to, i'm gonna finish this slide off performing arts is the other side which is the composition performing arts as in the composition sheet music midi files publishing or song to be performed all of that is on this side right here okay now let's keep going in reality over here this is what we're really looking at in reality on average this is what a producer agreement will stipulate a four percent producer royalty which will be paid from the artist's royalty right here so i'm just you know doing a standard deal 80 20 deal artist gets 20 percent four percent comes out of the artist's cut leaving the artist with 16 producer gets four label is 80 percent okay Remember uh, um, uh, last week when I was saying the money that comes in from streams, this is your re-up money? So independent artists, your re-up money, if you're giving away to the producer 50% of the money, it's going to take you to re-up and buy more beats and do more recordings. It doesn't make any sense. Producers, you got to understand that as well. You get what I'm saying? This 4% is going to help you eat, and we're going to break this down and break this down in two scenarios for you, everybody. So this is the master. This is the sound recording over here. And this is publishing. Writer 50%, producer 50%. What a lot of you don't understand in the game is that just because you're the producer doesn't mean you always get 50%, and I will explain. And just because you're the writer doesn't mean you always get 50%. In the game of publishing, the writers and the producers are all known as songwriters. You may see the producer uh, being referred to as a composer, and you may see the writer being referred to as an author, which is how they actually like to what they like to call you all but this is what we call you all for slang producer and writer okay this side is the publishing that is not the real name of it okay but it is also called the musical work which is more of a legal term for it. and then it's through the copyright office it's the work of the performing arts this is in reality when you sell a beat in a basic sense this is what you're getting the artist probably wrote the lyrics you produced it, y'all get y'all split it, publishing 50-50, and then producers, you walk away with 4% royalty. That's it. It's been this way for ages. People are working on new ways to do new things with it, but this is pretty much what it's gonna be. If I'm a record label, I'm never giving you 50% of the master. That is that is that is blasphemy. That's cutting my bottom line, and that's gonna tank the label. And the labels, you're cutting the label out of the ecosystem of the music industry. That's dumb. All right. So now, should beat makers get 50% of what? Should be beat makers get 50% of publishing? Now, I'm speaking to all of the producers who just make the beat, they sell the beat, and they're not even in the studio sessions. They're not producing the vocals, they're not arranging any, they're not doing anything. In that case, I don't believe that you should. Now, I've had this gripe with producers for a while now because I'm like, yo, you're asking for 50%, but look at all the other people that had to be there to make this happen. You know what I'm saying? The writer had to write, then there was a vote. Let's say if it was some, some singing. There had to be a vocal producer helping the, the artist actually get the, the stuff down so it would sound good. And then maybe you had a co-producer there who was doing arrangements. Maybe they had to add a couple more instruments to it or whatnot. See, in those stupid Beat Stars agreements, it says that the producer is entitled to 50% and whatever extra stuff you do to the track all comes out of the writer's side. I don't feel that's fair because if that producer that was on beat stars or sold the beat and won at 50% did nothing but just make the music, but they didn't do any extra arrangements. They didn't come in and run the session. See, these are the producers who when when they get their shot, I mean, even at actually just getting in the studio, let's just say you went in with a with a uh, Jasmine Sullivan. Would you be able to actually run that session? First of all, you got to get the butter butterflies out your stomach because you got to deal with an artist who's seasoned, who, you know, you're dealing with money at this point. Would you be able to really run that session? The thing is, no, you wouldn't. How long have you been practicing at producing vocals for other artists day in, day out? You know what I mean? To get to build up your chops to produce in that way. So that's why the artist will say, hey, man, I'll pay you a thousand dollars for that beat. But they're going to bring in their own vocal producer, their own arranger. So, no, you shouldn't be entitled to get 50 percent. But this is the stupid thing BeatStars does with their contracts. And they think that, you know, all producers think that they should get 50 percent. I mean, you know, and, and I'm, I'm just telling you, I'm just giving you the real with this. 
You know, and I want to hear what you got to say down in the comments. I want to hear this. So why do I need to pay producer points? Now, this is from the artist perspective. Well, in exchange for making that purchase, it's a standard custom to pay the music producer a royalty from the sales and streams of the master recording, usually four to five percent, depending on how much you purchased it for. The lower the purchase price, the higher the points, the higher the purchase price, the more points will stay the same. And I'll I'll give you a point scale a little bit later in the video. Now. This is an example here. Look at this. Look at this guy. He's a farmer. He's a botanist. He designed a signature pepper to give Tabasco its signature flavor, right? To give them, give them a signature sauce. Tabasco does have a trademark pepper, a patented pepper, but it took a farmer to grow this, to design that pepper so that they could have a signature flavor profile for the pepper inside of the sauce, and so this farmer is going to ask for a royalty from the Tabasco company saying that, man, I really worked hard. And if you don't know, it takes years to design a pepper specifically for this flavor. The farmer is going to say, hey, man, look, I really designed this seed for you, this type of pepper. I really think, I mean, can you give me 4% of the sales? I think that's fair. You know what I mean? I mean, now, now in the food industry, you might be getting like 1% or 2%, but I'm just saying. I'm just making you understand this in a different scenario. I believe that's fair, especially when you're selling tons of sauce. You get what I'm saying? Let's look at it from a Heinz ketchup perspective. I designed, oh, I didn't change that. I designed a signature tomato with a signature C, like the, to give it a really dope flavor profile for your ketchup. And you're selling bazooka tons of this stuff all over the world. I feel like at least your tomato designer should at least get some royalties for the sale you know, a certain percentage. And I think that's fair. This is how producer royalties work. The producer goes in, they develop a signature sound that they have themselves. You say, I really like your sound. I think your sound would really blend well with my lyrics. I'm going to take this and we're going to blend this together and we're going to make something really, really dope. The producer is then going to ask you for a royalty. Is that wrong? Is that wrong in that sense to ask you for that? Because we wrote the composition together, but I'm just asking you from your master royalties, I just want to get a percentage. That's it. Because we got to talk about how producers eat. Okay? Now, I'm going to get there in a minute. But artists, this is you. I bought it, which means I own it. No, you don't own it 100%. You only own the master rights. You get what I'm saying? This All this has, this, all this stems from all of you all coming out of the leasing world and you're trying to, you're, you're getting bigger now. And so now people are buying beats. The artists are getting tired of leasing. They're saying, hey, look, I got 500 for you. Let's start there. And they're like, well, the artists are saying, well, I, per I put, spent a lot of money for these beats, man. I own it. Now, artists, I got to tell you, you don't own it. If you purchased it and you got the exclusive rights, not a license, you only got the master rights. You didn't get the publishing. So producers, you got to understand, you're not selling your publishing artists. You got to understand that $500,000 you spent, even if you spent $10,000, you didn't buy the publishing from the producer unless you stated it. Now, I have videos on the channel on this stuff. I think it's how to, how to lease and license beats or something like that. But it's already on this channel. I go in depth on how that works. You only bought the master rights. Well, I bought the exclusive license, which means I own it. Again, no, you don't. You paid $300 to $500 to place a hold on the track so the producer doesn't resell it for X amount of months or years. You don't own anything, okay? So you want to make sure you do your buyouts. Now, if we're buying out, which is what a record company would actually do, then the master rights to the reproduction of the musical composition in a new recording is what you purchase. Another way of saying this is you purchase the right to make a new master recording from the producer's and or songwriter's composition and own that particular master recording outright 100%. OK, you did not buy the composition, which is otherwise known as publishing. So let's go back a few slides all the way to the beginning. In the studio, the producer in his production studio made the beat and the music and all that stuff in its composition form, even though you can hear it in the audio form. But in its composition form, you said, I'm paying you X amount of dollars to go take this into the studio and produce a brand new recording for my record label. OK. So therefore, I own, I pay for the studio time, and I paid you via a producer agreement for the master rights right here. 
You get what I'm saying? Artists, that's all you pay for. You didn't pay for publishing. You have to state that you're paying for publishing. And in 99.99% of the time, the producer's not going to sell you to publishing. That's like, that's like suicide if you're trying to do that, producers. So don't do that. And artists, come on, man. We got to keep this music thing going. So don't cut people out where they can't eat. You get what I mean? So now, now let's go back. Let's go back into this thing. So how does the producer eat? Well, the $500 that you're going to give that producer or the 1000 or the 3000 10000 15000 whatever you're going to give them, they're going to eat on that buyout fee. Why? Because you're not giving them 50% of the master. You get what I'm saying? They will never have those master rights ever again. And you bought that. So they're going to eat off the buyout fee. Then they're going to ask you for a producer royalty, which just, you know, helps them further eat down the line as you as you do well with your songs, they want to keep eating as well. Why not? You get what I'm saying? Like, I helped you with the signature sound again. You get what I'm saying? So, in that case, they're going to ask for a producer royalty. Then, they're going to eat from publishing. Now, let me explain this. Publishing pays way less than the master. I mean, way less than the master. You get what I'm saying? In publishing, the producer's not nearly going to eat enough as they would if they had a combined producer royalty and publishing. And if you paid them $500, that's enough to get to, that's that's like two weeks pay or a week of pay for some people. That's not even, that's not even enough. So now we're going to hope that the record does well. We're going to hope you get millions of streams, but in reality, the producer knows that this, this, this artist is probably really only get going to get about a million streams and 4% on the master side of a million streams is not a lot of money. I don't even believe it's a hundred dollars. You get what I'm saying? So then they're going to hope that you get it synced, which is where they can really eat because they get a publishing check from the synchronization stuff, the upfront sync fees and the, um, the royalties that come from it being on TV. But if you, the artist, you're not doing your work to exploit the record because you're an independent record company and you're an independent publisher. If you're not doing the work to exploit that song, then that's why they're hoping that it gets synced, which means in reality, this producer, if they sold you the beat for $500, that's really all they're making, period. They might make an extra $100 over the lifetime of that song. After that, if you don't really do what you're supposed to do, which is work your records, work your compositions, then the producer, hey, they on to the next. They made a maximum five, $600, and and now they got to go do it again to find another artist that hopefully has that or more. You get what I'm saying? So now you can start to see the reality of this. So here's our granddaddy point scale, $502,000. I recommend artists and producers, y'all come to an agreement around 10 to 15%. Why? Because of what I just said back here. If you're doing less than a million streams and you don't really have the know-how to market your stuff, you're just getting started, but you do want to own your stuff, you can own your stuff at around this rate, $500 to $1,000. But if you give them a bigger producer royalty, then they're gonna, it's going to be easier for them to part with those master rights than if you say, I'm not giving you a producer royalty at all. I'm giving you $500. Now we're not doing, now we're not doing good business. We're not making a good deal. You get what I'm saying? That makes the producer community angry. You know what I mean? And it's like, oh, man. I did. And then they go on the forums and they start talking about who they were dealing with. Now, we don't want that to happen. And artists, you got to understand, you're not going to get what, but if it, what you want is those master rights to get the producer out of your hair. You know what I'm saying? So if you want to do that, then make this offer right here. Now, if you're going higher, this is where you are. 3,000 plus, this is where you are. This is where you are. Really, literally, literally, this is where you are. And it's probably not going to change at this point because now you're in major label land or major indie land. And this is really what they're doing up here. You get what I'm saying? So as long as you understand that, then we're good on this thing. I ain't know I was so tiny down here. All right. Now, it's hard to get artists to pay producer royalties. No, it's not, producers. You need a proper producer agreement and you at least need a split payment function at your distributor. That's one RPM. That's uh, distro kid symphonic. You know what I mean? Um, who else has this United masters? 
you just got to make sure that the artist is doing business at one of those distributors that offer that right there. And that should be in your producer agreement that they use one of those split payment distributors that offer that function so you can get paid. Okay. Well, I still don't feel like I should pay producer royalties. It's your choice. But as you grow, mature producers aren't going for the BS artists. They just not. You're not going to run across somebody and be like, yeah, man, I'm paying you $3,000. I ain't give you nothing else. Oh, okay. Kick rocks, man. Get out of here. Because it's not. that's not how business is done in this game. Like, I know a lot of you all are new, but you really don't know what's ahead of you at step number three, step number four. I've been there, so I know. And ain't nobody going for that, oh, I ain't paying you producer royalties. And if you're not, well, you better pony up a huge check for that. You get what I'm saying? You better buy me out 10 years worth of royalties for that. And I'm just keeping it funky with you. How long do I pay them? For life. Copywriters for life, plus 70 years. But you think you're not going to pay them? I mean, this is what it is. So y'all got to come to something amicably here. You got to learn the game before you start just, you know, just going at each other. Because you don't know what you're talking about. That's why I make the videos that I make. Because at the end of the day, you got to build your foundation for all of this to run. Artists, if you're paying out people $500, even if you're paying $600 plus from your pocket, you need your LLC bill. Ain't no way we're moving that much cash because if you're acquiring those rights, even at that low dollar amount, somebody's tracking them bank accounts. And it needs to be underneath an LLC. And producers, if you're taking $600 plus, $1,000, $3,000 into your bank account, you need to do that underneath an LLC and not under your personal name. You get what I'm saying? So grab the 60-day record label. It's going to help you with that foundation right there. And then everybody, artists and producers, are going to learn how to collect their royalties the right way as an independent publisher so you can have everything in your possession, cutting out the middleman, keeping your 15% until you're ready to hire a real publisher to really do this work for you and actually work your records for you. You get what I'm saying? Now, if you feel like you need further assistance with this, book a call. But most of the setup is in here. But book a call with me, man. I love getting on the phone with you all. I love strategizing. Really, these calls are strategy calls for a lot of people. And like I said, sometimes I don't see you all for quite some time because what I give you on these calls is, is pretty in-depth. You get what I'm saying? But at least... Now you have some clarity. You're going you're gonna to really sell a lot more beats this way. Artists, you're going to have a lot more relationships with producers this way when you be fair and when you know what you're talking about when you want to acquire some things, okay? So you could go to a B-list uh, producer with this arrangement. Hey, man, look, I got $600, but I'm willing to part with 12% of 12% producer royalty for you because we got to spend money on marketing. And they're going to say, all right, man. All right, so if you're going to spend $600, I feel like buy three beats from me at $600 a pop, and I'll get a 12% producer royalty, and then we'll see what we do. All right, cool. See, when you do business the right way, when you know what you're negotiating on, it becomes, you you get those relationships. And they say, by the way, look, man, since you're getting started and you're spending some money, let me introduce you to X, Y, Z, blah, blah, blah. You know what I'm saying? So you go to a bigger producer and do that. All right. One that's not huge, but somebody that has maybe a placement or two who's willing to do that. You know what I'm saying? So producers make the same deal with the artists. You know, don't be so hard on them. Don't be like, no, nah, I got to get 50 percent. Nah, man, we, that's not what we doing. That's not the game. So all, hopefully this video has provided you with the clarity that you need now so we can squash a lot of this beef that's been swelling between producers and artists, new producers name mainly and new artists mainly, because I know you all don't know the business, but go ahead and subscribe to this channel because that's why I do these videos. All right, y'all. So anyway, Music Money Makers, if you make music, you should always make money. Visit musicmoneymakeover.com, download the 60-day record label, book a call there, and I'll see you next time. Peace. <laughs>